If you want to destroy an LED fitting quickly, there's no faster way than connecting a series fitting in parallel across an LED driver. In this video, we're going to try and help you to avoid making this costly mistake. For many years, installing an extra low voltage light meant feeding it by a transformer. And for you younger viewers, it was quite common to just install one big transformer and then run several spots off it. A couple of simple rules of thumb were applied where you made sure that the voltage rating of the transformer and the lamps matched, the total power rating of the lamps added together didn't exceed the total VA rating of the transformer, and just trying to keep the ELV cables roughly the same length to each lamp to prevent uneven dimming, and it was a fairly straightforward job. For quite a while it was then common to connect one lamp to one transformer. Now, however, we've been met by the LED revolution in lighting, and at first glance, it all seems to map across fairly simply. The incandescent lamps have been replaced by LEDs. The transformer has become the driver. Just make sure the voltage is the same and that you don't overload the driver. Simple, almost. There's one major difference, and it's one that can catch out the unwary electrician. Let's head inside to discuss it. So LED drivers come in two types. There's a constant voltage driver and a constant current driver. If you've got a group of LEDs in a strip or a tape or a ribbon or a rope, then you'll probably be fitting a constant voltage type. But when you've got a group of fittings with high powered LEDs that can have a number of fittings added, you're likely to be using a constant current driver. What difference does it make? A really critical one and one that if you don't understand could end up costing you in time and replacement materials. How? Well, the first thing to know is that LEDs are not like the traditional loads that we're used to connecting. They're semiconductors. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not a very good conductor. It means that their electrical qualities change depending on the electricity they're connected to, which I can demonstrate for you on this LED fitting that Collingwood have sent to us. I'm going to connect it up to this benchtop power supply. So this is going to inject DC electricity into the fitting behind me here. And I'm going to control how much current flows through it. Now watch what happens to the current and the light output as I reduce the voltage just a little bit. So I'm just going to turn the voltage down just a touch. So that's just going to go down by a fraction of an amount. And look what's happening to the light output. And look what's happening to the current that flows. You can see that once we drop below, in this case, just 10% of the original voltage, so we've gone just beyond 10% drop in voltage, there is now no current flowing through the fitting whatsoever and the fitting has turned off. So you see a small voltage change affects the current flow massively. If this was a resistive load, we'd expect the current and the light output to drop in direct proportion to the voltage. What's actually happening is the subatomic particles in the LED materials are arranging themselves differently, but that's a very different video. Now, because the current flowing through the LEDs is so critical to the operation, the driver, like the one I've got here, actually operates a bit like the ballast in a fluorescent light and manages the current through the LED. Of course, this can only be guaranteed if you connect the LEDs and the driver up correctly. Set them up wrong, and the current may be too high, reducing the life of the LED, and if you go way too high with the current, then you'll destroy it. Even a small increase in current through them above the rated value can seriously shorten their operating life and even damage them pretty quickly. Now, let's say you get a set of lights that needs a constant current supply, like these lovely spike lights here from Collingwood. It's so important to decent manufacturers to try and help you not destroy your shiny new fittings that Collingwood have put warnings on the fittings in three different places that this must be connected to a constant current driver. They've put one here on the head of the fitting, they've put one on this little removable label, and even one on the leads here is a last ditch effort to stop you connecting them up wrong and destroying them. So how should they be connected? Well, the clue is in the description, constant current driver. If you're at college, or you can cast your mind back that far, you may remember the kindly teacher who taught your science unit, desperately trying to get you to remember that the current is constant in a series circuit. And there it is, finally, after all these years, we've found the application for those seemingly pointless science lessons that your well-meaning lecturer tried to get across to you. If you've got LED fittings that need a constant current driver, then they need to be connected in series. Let's just demonstrate the principle using this benchtop power supply that we've got here. Now, this power supply can be used in one of two ways. One way is to give a constant voltage and the other is to deliver a constant current. Now, these fittings require a constant current of 350 milliamps. Common ratings include 700 and 1050 milliamps as well. Collingwood have another type of spike light here that can operate on either 700 milliamps or 350 milliamps. The light output from them changes according to the current level that you supply. 
If you run them at the higher current level of 700 milliamps, they will obviously give off more light, but also use more power. And the drivers have a maximum power rating that they can deliver, just like a transformer. So if you're putting together a system of LED lights, think about the current that you're connecting them to, how much power each fitting will dissipate, and what the total power will be that you're connecting to the driver. Obviously, that total cannot exceed the maximum power that the driver can deliver. Most drivers for LEDs also have a lower value of power that they will operate on. So if you connect a 0.5 watt fitting to a 1 to 5 watt driver, it won't work properly. That's why we occasionally run into problems when dimming LEDs, because the power goes too low. Anyway, back to our demonstration here and the importance of connecting in series. I've set up the power supply to deliver the 350 milliamps current required by the lamp. And if I just dial that voltage back up to where we were at the start, about 3 volts, you can see the lamp is illuminated and the current delivered by the power supply is 350 milliamps. So let's add in another fitting, but remember it needs connecting in series. Now this is where as electricians who are used to connecting up pretty much everything in parallel, we need to take a deep breath and just follow the directions. Now the bit where it gets a little bit weird is that we need to connect opposite colours together. So we need to connect the black conductor out of the first fitting. So that's this conductor here. I'm just going to take this label off so that that's not uh, getting in my way when I make these connections now. So we need to take the black conductor out of the first fitting and we're going to put that into this little connector block here that's part of the outdoor connection that Collingwood provides. So we'll just put that into there. And that black conductor out of the first fitting needs to be connected to the positive or the red conductor of the next fitting. So that now needs to go into the red there like that. So we'll pop that into that connection there. So you can see we've got the negative from the first fitting, the black conductor is now connected to the positive from the second fitting, which is the red conductor there. So hopefully you can see that quite clearly. So if we did that in a 230 volt light fitting, we'd be messing up the polarity for the rest of the circuit, but not here. So we're going to power this back up again. So we'll reconnect the leads. So you can see if we turn it back on, the current is still set to 350 milliamps. You can see that's not changed, but we've told the power supply to keep the current constant. So because we've connected an additional load in series, we've increased the circuit resistance, meaning that the power supply is having to work harder to push the same amount of current through the circuit. And that means that the voltage has increased, as you can see here. So just to prove the point, we'll add a third light in series. So again, we're going to take the black conductor or the negative from fitting number two, and we're going to connect that to the red conductor or the positive from fitting number three. So we'll just pop that in there like that. Tighten that up so we've got a good connection. And then of course, we're going to connect the black or negative from fitting number three we're gonna hook up there. So you can see that actually the input colors at the start and finish remain the same. So red is still connected to red, black is still connected to black. It's only at these kind of intermediate connections where we've got uh, the black conductor or the negative connected to the red conductor or the positive of the next fitting. So let's just power it up again. So if we turn that on, you can see that the current is staying the same, 350 milliamps, but the voltage has increased to compensate for the increased resistance. And this is basically what a constant current driver is doing, like this one. It just adjusts the voltage it puts out to keep the same amount of current flowing through the LED fittings. It's just obviously bundled into a much smaller package. Of course, this will only be true up to a point and there is a limit on the number of lights that you can connect. This is indicated as normal by the power rating of the driver. Now, the problem can occur in one of two ways. The first is if we connect a constant current LED fitting to a constant voltage driver, the driver will deliver a particular voltage and attempt to push too much current into the LED. Hence, it will be very bright for a very short period of time, seriously reducing its operating life. The second problem is that if we connect up several fittings in parallel to a constant current driver, then the constant current will be shared between the fittings and cause the fittings to flash or not to work at all. So that's the principle behind how a constant current driver works. Now, it's all well and good having this all laid out nice and neatly here on the bench where we can clearly see the connections that need to be made to make this into a series circuit. But what about if we want to install this into a real world setting? 
well, the principle stays the same. However, the actual connections can become a little bit mind-bending, especially if the fittings are spaced some distance apart. So in the next video on this subject, we'll have a look at a real installation and how to make those connections properly, as well as looking at some really nice connection solutions and outdoor IP rated drivers that Collingwood have produced. So all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.